Welcome back everyone, Pal Ponder on Weather here. Yesterday, we had a major disruption in the polar vortex that could have big impacts on our weather over the next six weeks. So let's start off and take a look at the overall atmosphere and take you way up there today, all the way up in the stratosphere. This is literally like 30 to 50 miles up there. And yesterday we had confirmation of what's known as a major sudden stratospheric warming event. Now these are very rare. In fact, they only happen about six times per decade. But when they do, you get a massive spike up there in the Arctic and that displaces that cold Arctic air all the way down into the mid latitudes and filters it and sends pulses of Arctic, deep Arctic air down into Canada, into the United States over about a five to six week time frame. And like I mentioned, these are kind of fairly rare. Here's a list compiling a lot of the stratospheric warming events dating back to all the way from 1958. And if we take you through all the, the entire list, we've had about 37 uh, stratospheric warming events over since 1958 and that turns out to be on average about six per decade so these are kind of a fairly rare event in fact the last time one of these occurred was way back on january 5th 2021 and yes these things can take several weeks to get the true impacts but during that event if you recall it took about five weeks but texas bottomed out as some extremely cold temperatures back on uh, Valentine's in 2021. And the time before that, it happened again back on January the 2nd, 2019. That event maxed out on January 29th and January 30th up in the upper Midwest when Illinois bottomed out at 38 below zero. Now this event is actually happening about five to six weeks later than when those two events occurred. So if we take a look at some of the analogs going back from these the last, since 1958, we take a look about 1984. They had a similar event back on February the 24th of that year. And then we also had another similar event way back on 2018 on February the 12th. Now this one was February the 16th. So what happened during those two analog years? Now, this is where we stand so far. It's been a fairly warm winter for a good part of the country. This is the last 90 days temperature anomalies so far. And you can definitely see much of the central and eastern two thirds of the US overall has been pretty much well above average across the southeast and across the east. It's been colder than average so far, predominantly out west in the Intermountain West. Well, overall, things could change in a big way with this stratospheric warming event. So if we take you back to those two similar analogs when we had a major displacement back in 1984 and 2018, this is what the Februarys look like for that year. It kind of looked fairly similar, right? You had all the warmer conditions in our central and eastern two thirds of the US with the warmer anomalies down in the southeast, as well as into the northeast with colder anomalies out here into the Intermountain West and out in our western states. Now, if we move forward, what happened in March after the stratospheric warming event, then things flipped around in a big way with well below average temperature anomalies, not just for the West now, but also for the, uh, for the upper Midwest, for the Ohio Valley, into the Mid-Atlantic, as well as into the Northeast, and even parts of the Southeast was below average during that March timeframe, and that it could extend even into April. So these things can last a long time, sometimes six to eight weeks and have downward impacts on the overall weather. And yes, during even in April timeframe, that those temperatures even you know modified even more, and it was below average during that uh, time frame of April back in '84 and of 2018. So, but also we've had a big influence in our the overall ocean temperatures because we've been in this 
La Nina for literally since May of 2020. And we're starting to see the first indications that the La Nina is finally losing its grip. <laughs> so we're only about a couple of weeks away, but by March, we should be able to say goodbye to La Nina. You can see the latest update from the Climate Prediction Center transferring in more, more of an Enzo neutral pattern. So that alone too is gonna to be influencing and changing our weather patterns on the combination of this sudden stratospheric warming event is gonna bring colder air than what typically you haven't seen this so far this winter and probably change up the direction of precipitation and snow, more snow in places that maybe not have not seen much snow so far this winter so if we take a look at the combination of effects of this la nina because we've been dealing this with this for the last like i mentioned three years and this is a cumulative total of snowfall departure dating back from october 1st 2019 and where we stand in the middle of february and you can definitely see all these areas in the uh, ohio valley into the mid-atlantic into the northeast they are well below average uh, with snowfall. In fact, Connecticut alone is about 75 inches below average cumulative over the last 1,200 days. So, and there's numerous states up there in the Northeast that's well below average being influenced under that La Nina. You can see where, where we are kind of above average in all these areas in green down here in the portions of the South, uh, but there's really not that many, right? We've been dealing with this La Nina, so it's gonna be a good thing to come, even transferring to more of a, an Enzo neutral. It could put some of these places with increased snowfall that you maybe haven't even seen since you've been predominantly under that La Nina over the last three years. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns on North America, hit the subscribe button and you're in, you get all my daily content on this channel. It's also important to hit the like button as well. It definitely helps out more than you know. And we did have an extension on the Temp Tempest Weather Flow Weather Station. The code BESTWX still works. It gives you $40 off of free shipping. So this is one of the best weather stations on the market. And I've had a lot of people take advantage of this. And if you would like to purchase one of these at a discount of $40 off and free shipping, you can definitely use my my link below and i'll have that in the description below so you can order one for yourself you'll definitely love it so let's take a look at the breakdown going forward so heading in the next week we're gonna have a a big big temperature gradients right look at this ridge look at this rare ridge this is by thursday this ridge really building this is something you would actually see maybe in the summertime we got a 594 mil, uh, you know ridge of high pressure going to be building up there in florida well we got a massive our first impulse of arctic air dropping down from the arctic through canada and lowering into the uh, into the united states with the coldest anomalies pressing uh, into our northwestern regions while we're going to be fighting this southeast ridge like we have been and some really some record heat too so we have the initial stages of this with this blocking really starting to set up into Alaska. And then we also have some blocking almost taking shape up in there into Greenland, where we do have more ridging starting to build up there into the east, as well as in the southeast. And we have our first initial polar lobe that's going to be dropping down. These are all step down processes. This is not a quick hit in and out. This is over a six week time span. So this is the first influence in our weather that's going to be taking place next week with the massive surge of cold Arctic air plunging down into uh, the continental U.S. down predominantly into our northwestern regions and off into the west coast. But check out the temperature gradients as we go into Thursday with up to 42 record high temperatures with that massive dome of ridge of <laughs> high pressure really building over there in Florida. Look at South Texas cranking in the middle 90s, folks. This is almost summertime weather, and it's even going to top out at 92 degrees in Orlando. But look at the, you know, the record temperatures across the southeast as that ridge really starts to dominate. But the polar vortex is showing its rear, showing its head up there into in our northern states with even record t t temperatures 
for them. So we could be looking at extreme temperatures uh, below zero for high temperatures and almost 95 degrees in South Texas and 90s in Florida. That's a hundred degree temperature swing. So that's gonna be a huge temperature gradient you know, heading into the middle of next week. And unfortunately, that's gonna set the stage for a potential ice storm that really could take shape with that massive plunge in Arctic temperatures. That's gonna put the coldest anomalies out here into our Intermountain West and bring all the heavier snows for them. And there's gonna be a sharp gradient with that jet streak moving across. You've got the south wind, causing the you know the air, the warm air to rise and you got the arctic air sinking and that's going to create that ice storm could unfold across portions of southern of minnesota portions of northern illinois portions of southern uh, michigan here getting into portions of pennsylvania but to the north of there you could probably have your biggest snows of the season really breaking out in the dakotas and minnesota back into wisconsin and through uh through portions of michigan here as for very heavy snows could unfold. In fact, the blend of the models is already, already kind of hinting to this as we're gonna have that sharp, you know, drop of the polar vortex and you know more or less confined to our northern northern branch. But this snow swath is could be pretty intense. We could be looking at uh, if not multiple feet of snow potentially. And this is the blend. This is probably your most conservative model out there showing you know the, the the 12 to almost two feet of snow in these regions of the dakotas through minnesota through portions of wisconsin here going up into the upper peninsula through portions of uh, you know into toronto into montreal the northern portions of maine so this could be really significant snows and very heavy snows really starting to break out into the Intermountain West, but we also could be looking at some a lot of ice accumulating in this region as too. So this could be a high impact event as far as ice goes, and then very heavy snows as well. So these regions have to be con uh, concerned about an ice storm setup as we head into your Wednesday night, Thursday, through your Friday timeframe, heading into next week, and then very heavy snow to the north northern side of there. But as again, it's a step down process. So I think the following week we get just a little bit colder. So we'll still have the building of the ridge starting to build and start to take a shape over Alaska. Then we'll have the ridge building over Greenland. That's a sure sign as we have more pulses of colder air filtering in into the US. And that's exactly what's gonna happen by week two as this ridge of, of the Southeast Ridge is gonna be slowly trying to be eating, eating away. So it's not gonna be nearly as dominant as what it's gonna be uh, next week. As the following week, it'll start to kind of lose its grip. And a lot of the colder air will start to win over by the time we get into your last week of February, heading into those first couple of days of March. And the same thing with the CFS daily you know, guidance as well going into that first week of March, starting to get the influence of that sudden stratospheric warming event. Now, again, this just happened yesterday. So I think it is gonna be a step down process, but the progress looks to be colder, a colder trend as we trend a little bit further, especially as we get into March. Now, of course, these daily high temperatures will be just averages will be going up every single day because it is March. It's not in the heart of winter anymore, but your overall temperature anomaly should be predominantly on the colder side and then filtering in and eating away more of that Southeast Ridge going into that first week of March timeframe. And I think it just gets extended going into, you know, beyond that. Here's the latest the GFS extended guidance kind of implying the same thing. So we're starting to see more global models starting to feel the effects of that sudden stratospheric warming event as that colder air will start to drain out of, out of the Arctic uh, through the mid latitudes. And it's, it's, a, it's a step down process and a pulsing event that will could be sending pulses of Arctic air into into the continental us and then you know, overtaking these regions bringing these t overall below average temperature anomalies in places you really haven't seen technically maybe that much cold air so far this season but yes a lot of the guidance is implying that even through the middle of march through that third week of march more cold air continues to drain 
down there from Canada and into the into the US. And again, even on the weeklies, the weeklies are kind of showing the same thing on the European weeklies that literally just got updated yesterday as well. They are also implying that we'll have a lot of the colder air locked in places that maybe have not seen that much colder. At least it's going to be, you know, take at least eventually we could probably say goodbye to this southeast ridge, especially as we head into your March time frame. And as we get deeper into March, a lot of the guidance and there's more guidance, even with the European you know, weeklies showing those well below average temperatures lasting all the way through uh, the last week of March heading into April. And that's exactly what the analogs imply too from 2018. Uh, and then the last time we've had those you know those that stratospheric warming event that happened about this time this the same time frame that this that this, this event has happened so hey i appreciate you guys uh watching uh do like this video definitely hit the subscribe button and catch me the next update where i protect you before and after storm